Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at a brand new model from Rapido Trains UK. <laughs> Rapido trains have produced British railway models in the past, of course, but those have been commissioned exclusive models. Today, for the very first time, I am going to be looking at a general release Rapido model, which has gone out to a whole network of different retailers. It's a brand new range of models, which is all new, new tooled, and only just been released. So the model I've got is this, the brand new Rapido Trains Gunpowder Van. And I thought because this is a little bit of a first and it's something a little bit special, in for a penny, in for a pound, why not pick up a couple of them? So here I've got a Great Western Gunpowder Van and also an LNER Van, so I thought it might be quite interesting to try a couple of them. Now the only Rapido model that I've looked at in the past was the J70 locomotive. And if that model was anything to go by, then the quality and the level of detail that Rapido offers is absolutely fantastic. Although, as you might expect, of course, that does come at a bit of a price. And that is definitely true with these wagons. So the RRP for these wagons is £32.95. That's a lot of money. And at the retailers, the going rate is around £28. Now, don't forget the last new van that I looked at was the Oxford Rail 10 tonner, and that was around half the price of these at £14.50 from the retailers. Now, that sounds absolutely ridiculous, and maybe it will be, but the thing is, I have never tried a Rapido van before. I don't know what Rapido are capable of in this area, and it might very well be that these Rapido vans have qualities and features that those much cheaper Oxford vans did not. And if that's the case, then yeah, I'm happy to be proved wrong. I'm happy to say that these are not ridiculous, but it's important to have an open mind We'll look at the models before making a decision on whether that price is ridiculous. So high expectations, I think that is definitely true. Yeah, they've got to be really up there, haven't they, in terms of the features. But today, for the first time, we're going to find out whether that is the case. So come with me, let's get these out and find out what the new Rapido gunpowder vans are like. So in real life, these gunpowder vans were built in around 1930 and they were designed specifically for safely transporting gunpowder. And so they had all metal bodies and they were built without nails or anything like that that might produce a spark because that would not have been good for obvious reasons. And these were in service until around the 1980s, so there's a fair bit of scope there for modelling. And also, as you can tell by the fact that we've got an LNER one here, and a Great Western one here. These were not just owned by a single company, so there's a greater chance that these will be compatible with uh, your model railways, which is great. But let's have a look at these. Let's see what we are dealing with. So we'll start with the LNER one here. Let me show the end of the box so you can see the version I've got. So this is Gunpowder Van. It's RCH pattern, and it is in the LNER grey early, and it's number 147511. And if I show you the back of the box, there's quite a nice sentiment on here. It says that Rapido Trains UK is a company run by train nuts, just like you. I guess that's fair to say. Rapido is owned and operated by railway modelers who just want all this neat stuff for their layouts. We hope you enjoy operating and displaying our models as much as we do. And then there's a bit about their newsletter and stuff. So, very admirable, all sounds very good, but we don't want to hear about that, we want to actually see results. So, let's see what the LNER gunpowder van is actually like. I can't imagine what features this thing is going to have to have to justify the amount of money that these cost, but I'm excited to find out. So, first of all, what are these? We've got an accessories bag with something inside. I have absolutely no idea. What are they? Why are they not separately fitted? There is no paperwork or anything in the box or anything on the box to tell us what those are. So maybe it will become apparent when I get the model out. Maybe that will be forever a mystery. If you know what it is, comment down below. Okay, let's take a look at the wagon then. Here we go. Let's open it up. Quite short wagons, as you can tell. Uh, that is prototypical, obviously. And there you have it, a gunpowder van. Let's get the plastic off then. And see what we are dealing with. So, wow, the first thing I've noticed is the finish. 
This model has quite a nice sort of satin shiny finish to it, as well it should of course, because the real things had the metal bodies, not wood, and that is reflected in the finish, and that really does look quality, very, very good. The other noticeable thing is, despite this being quite a small wagon, the weight is quite substantial here. Now, I don't think the chassis is die cast, but the axle boxes and the suspension springs and such, those are very clearly made of metal. So it does seem as though there are a number of quality features here. Do they justify more than double the price of a cheaper Oxford van? I'm not sure yet, but there is definitely some evidence here of quality, as you'd fully expect. So that looks really great. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. But of course, first, there is another van. So this is the Great Western one. Let me show you the end of the box. So this one is Gunpowder Van Diagram Z4. It is in the Great Western Grey this time, which uh, is not quite true. I think it's definitely a black. <clears throat> and it's number 105777. Uh, well, it looks like a black in the photos. <laughs> Let's get it out, shall we? And uh, see whether it's black in the flesh. Maybe it's just a very dark grey. Maybe that's the case. So, mystery detail bag again. What have we got here? We've got what look like the same details, but in a different colour. So they are black. Oh, sorry. They are grey. That's clearly black. But we'll call it grey if you like. So, yeah, again, not sure what those are. I'll inspect the model, see if I can figure it out in a second. All right, let's pull this baby out then, see if there's any differences. And wow, yeah, I mean, seriously great finish on these things. Can, does that come across on camera? Yeah, there's a real quality satin finish to this, which I think is going to make these stand out like sore thumbs, actually. But then again, not that many vans were made of metal in real life, so I guess it's fair enough, isn't it? Right, let's hold this with the other van. Yeah, I mean, there are some differences. I can see that the wheels are different. Clearly the decoration is quite a bit different as well. And even the door handles and the chains on the doors and such, those all clearly are different as well. So yeah, this is quite a, a serious model, isn't it? Definitely. They've not just churned out the same wagon in a load of different liveries like some manufacturers might. Yeah, there are clear molding differences in the bodies, which means multiple toolings have been developed. So yeah, really, really cool looking vans. Now though, let's take a much closer look at these. We'll see what the quality's like. We'll take a look at the level of detail and try and figure out whether these are worth the extraordinary price. So there they are up close for you, the brand new Rapido Gunpowder vans. And sure enough, the level of detail on these is really good and they are high quality wagons, I would say overall. But are they worth the money? Are these worth over £30 if you were to buy them at RRP? And for me, I think the answer has to be a no. I think if these had have been released at Oxford's price of like £14.50 or whatever, then sure, these would be very, very impressive indeed. But at £28 or £32.95, unfortunately, these just had to be better to justify that price. The quality, as I've said, is good, but it's not perfect. Buffers, for instance, we've got several wobbly buffers that are not fitted properly. On both models, that's the beauty of buying two. Nobody can say it's a one-off. The l &ER wagon has noticeably off-center wheels, which oscillate when spinning. And the Great Western gunpowder van has one stiff axle. I don't know whether that's because the axle boxes are separately fitted. Not the greatest quality in the world, but sure, overall, the quality of the finish and the quality of the build is pretty high. Similarly, the level of detail, as you can see, is just amazing, but we don't have any sprung buffers on these models, and we don't even have any chain link couplings to fit to these as an optional extra. Now, Oxford Rail managed to provide the couplings with their £14.50 wagon, and let's take a model such as the Dapple Turbot, which was over £5 cheaper than these, and that thing did have sprung buffers. Now, sprung buffers are a pointless feature. I'm perfectly happy to buy models without sprung buffers, but if I'm paying 30 quid for a small van, it really ought to have every possible feature it can, and if it's missing things like this, then why is it so expensive? I do think the price here is completely inappropriate. Anyway, let's talk about the positives with these models. So first of all, as you can see looking at the bodywork, there is a lot of molded detail here. And not only that, but there is a lot of variation between the two. So as you can see, the doors are significantly different. 
The roofs are completely different as well. As you can see, the Great Western version has rivets, whereas the LNER one does not up on its roof. And as you can see, the Great Western version has rivets on the end, whereas the LNER one doesn't. You've got different wheels across the two examples. As you can see, we've got spoked wheels here, which have a white painted rim on the LNER version. And then you've got the disc wheels on the Great Western wagon. So yeah, serious models. And they have gone to the trouble of tooling these subtle differences, which is quite impressive. The weight is very good indeed. These come in at 42 grams, which is quite a lot more than you'd expect of a wagon of this size. So there must be some decent weighting inside. I mean, the Oxford van was 29 grams. So on weight, yep, yeah, Rapido, definitely a tick. Nice substantial models, exactly what you'd expect at this price. The decoration on the whole is really, really good. Obviously the satin finish is real quality. That is definitely one thing that I think it's worth paying a little bit extra for. And as you can see, the painted or printed details are absolutely fantastic. Even down to the little notice on the door, which is probably legible. We'll see if the close-up lens can figure out what that says. It's all done to a high standard. And of course the Great Western livery is quite a bit different. You've got the red cross on the door, so open it at your own risk. And similarly, all of the printed details on that van are fantastic as well. So decoration, absolutely wonderful. As you can see, the sole bar or the chassis of the wagons, very, very detailed, aren't they? They've got printed detail on them, lots of rivets. They look absolutely fantastic. And the axle boxes and the springs, they are especially detailed as well. They are separately fitted parts, which may or may not have introduced a slight issue with the wheels fitting and turning freely but they do have a beautiful metal finish and the level of detail in those parts is really quite impressive, as is the brake rigging. Yeah, looks really good. Not too much clearance between the brake discs and the wheels themselves, so they look fairly realistic. And then on the underside, the framework of both wagons is nicely picked out as well. And then you've got the little lamp irons and such. I believe those are separately fitted. The NEM couplings are incredibly sturdy. I mean, look, you can push down on them a little bit. They're not at all what you would call floppy, and there is some left and right movement, which is good. But yeah, they are perfectly straight, which suggests good quality. So the level of detail is great, but it's really not much higher than wagons at half the cost of these. Same thing with the quality, really. Decent quality, the finish is noticeably better than what we've seen at much lower prices, but that's about it, and I think it's probably cancelled out by the loosely fitted parts, really. I think the screw link or the chain link couplings, that's a big omission really, isn't it? But let's try the performance. Let's get them down onto the track. We'll see how free rolling they are and check that everything functions as it should. Fingers crossed. Right, so I've got my gunpowder vans down onto the track with a bit of a test setup. I've chosen the Raven Q6 as today's loco because it just looks the business, doesn't it? It looks like the kind of engine that should be hauling gunpowder. And it's just occurred to me that the difference in livery between these two vans is quite amusing, isn't it? It shows a little bit about the character of the LNER and the Great Western. I mean, the LNER livery says, ah, well, it's gunpowder, there's gunpowder in this van, no big deal. And then the Great Western livery says, no, no, this van is full of gunpowder. We've painted it black and put a big red cross on the door to show that if you open it, the gunpowder will blow up and kill you and you will die. And then the LNR are like, eh, some gunpowder in this van, just take it easy, okay? So were the Great Western really cautious in real life or something? I don't know, the livery suggests it. Anyway, I've got a few other wagons just to make up the rake a little bit. Not a huge train this time. So I have tried the Gordons Hill rolling test. The LNR van actually did really well. It rolled nice and freely and made it a decent way down the hill, just over the first of the second radius curves. But because of its stiffer wheels, the Great Western van actually didn't do quite as well. It needed quite a bit of coaxing to actually start, and then it didn't make it quite as far. And I think the reason for the stiff wheels is probably due to those separately fitted axle boxes. Now, it's a cool feature, they look better because they're made of metal, but at the end of the day, because they're not injection molded into that chassis, there is the potential for the distance between the axle boxes to vary slightly due to the human error in assembly. And if the two are slightly too close somehow, then you'll get stiff wheels, and I assume that's what's happened with this one. I mean, it's not ultra stiff or anything, it's, it's not like stopping immediately when you start it, but this one, I mean, this one just keeps going. <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, let's reset and let's try and couple them together. Let's see if the couplings are effective. I am aware that they just crashed together and didn't couple, but you know, that's probably not what you'd call a fair test. So let's try now. So let's do a steady reverse. 
I think that's a Hornby wagon we're connecting to to start with. And successful coupling, and at a glance, the Rapido coupling appears to be at the right height, so that's a good sign. Let's go for the second one. All right, LNER and Great Western teaming up for the first time. <laughs> yeah, looks good. So, I mean, the couplings, it's looking good on the couplings. We've got a 100% pass rate so far. Let's go on and couple to the last few open wagons. There we go. Coupled. Yes. So, folks, even Rapido can get couplings right. And they don't produce stuff with these couplings on very often, so that is a pretty good start. Well done, Rapido. Right, let's try it around the track then. Let's see if they handle curves and such. And blimey, as part of a train, they do look pretty impressive, don't they? I mean, you can kind of tell that there's a difference in quality in the paintwork, can't you? Compared with the sort of Hornby and Backman stock. Yeah, even the Backman stock. Yeah, it's quite something. Right, let's send it off around the track. Let's see if it works around the tighter curves. Mm, so this is a fairly slow loco, this. And you'll notice there is a slight, well you might not notice, but there is a slight oscillation in the l &E -R van because of its slightly wobbly wheels. I don't know how common that is. It is only one of the four axles in my sample that is wobbly. But that's not great. I mean, it's very, very rare to find a wobbly wheel like that on a piece of rolling stock. I can't remember the last time I came across it, particularly not on a piece of rolling stock of this price. So that's something to look out for, I think, but no derailments, no issues with the couplings around the curbs or anything. The train seems to be staying coupled, which is good. And yes, the wagons might have cost a fortune and no, perhaps they don't have the features that you might expect of a wagon of this price. However, they do look fantastic. The improvement over our normal manufacturers in terms of livery and finish is apparent. And obviously the incredible molded detail in the bodies and also the underframes with all the separately fitted parts down there as well really does produce a wonderful effect as these vans ride along. So to an extent, yeah, I mean, you can see why these would have to be fairly expensive. And in terms of the livery and the decoration, you definitely get what you pay for. It's just the quality, really, that lets it down. And if we'd got a few more features, or alternatively, a slightly lower price, then I think I might be a bit more impressed with these. But overall, a decent purchase and very, very good looking vans. Let's have some ratings then for Rapido's brand new gunpowder vans. The level of detail then, I've given four star. Yeah, great level of detail. I think the decoration and the finish is definitely the best aspect of these models, but the molded detail is fantastic as well. In order to get five star, I think this ought to have had the couplings for the coupling hooks. That is a missing feature as far as I'm concerned, which is inappropriate at this price. And also the fact that these couldn't or didn't have sprung buffers is also a big question mark over the price. And I do reserve the five star on detail for models that have that. Performance then, now overall performance fantastic. They couple properly, the couplings are fine. Uh, they run over curves and everything okay and they're reasonably free rolling. However, there are some stiff and wobbly wheels. Don't cause a huge problem, but it wouldn't be right to give them a five on the performance given those issues. So I've knocked it down to four and a half. The quality, again, I've had to knock it down a little bit. Three and a half is the most I can do because of the wobbly buffers and the inconsistent axle boxes and whatnot. However, the build quality itself is generally pretty decent. The quality of the decoration is really good as well. All the application is good and crisp. However, I do think a fully die-cast chassis would have been better. It would reduce the margin for error on assembling the chassis, and it would also help to justify the frankly crazy price. Value for money then, two star. The RRP, £32.95, or a typical retailer price of £28.01. That, to me, is significantly overpriced for what you get here. I don't know if maybe Canadian or American customers, they're probably used to this sort of price for this sort of model, but UK customers tend to expect more for their money thanks to companies like Oxford Rail and Dapol, who do produce better wagons than these for much less money. So overall then that is 6.65 out of 10 and into the logbook it goes. In fourth place, although I have to say it is mainly the price that drags these wagons down. These models do actually look better than the Oxford van, but the detail is about the same. The performance is, you know, about the same. 
and yet the cost is so much more. So if the price was more reasonable, then yeah, this would be better than fourth place. Overall, good wagons, but definitely not worth the money, unfortunately. So in conclusion then, these are very, very good looking wagons, but I think Rapido have really got to be careful here because they have charged a lot of money for these wagons and there are a couple of quality issues. And I think if this continues from Rapido, then they could be in a little bit of bother. So I'm really expecting to see an improvement in quality in the future. No more missing features. We need full couplings, sprung buffers, everything they can throw at a model if they're gonna charge this. Either that or reduce the price a little bit. Either would be fine. But at the moment, as great as these look, other manufacturers are offering better value models at the moment. Hopefully, as Rapido find their feet, that will change. And hopefully their upcoming locomotives, those are the important ones, aren't they? Hopefully they will do more to justify what they cost. But overall, I've enjoyed this. Yeah, they're decent wagons overall, if not for one or two slight issues. If you're interested in picking some up, I will include some affiliate links down in the description. And of course, I'm really looking forward to what Rapido do next. Like I say, I'm sure they will improve. I'm sure they will get better. And hopefully they do, because this market over here in the UK could sure use their help. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. All right. Cheers, everybody.